All right, welcome everybody. So we've been working with orthogonal bases for subspaces and seeing how they're uh, convenient for finding projections of vectors into that subspace. Um, let's take a look at an example here where we have two vectors u1 and u2. And so u1 is the vector one third minus two thirds, two thirds. And u2 is the vector two thirds, two thirds, one third. And so if we take the inner product of these two vectors, we would get 2 ninths uh, minus 4 ninths plus 2 ninths. So that cancels out. And the inner product of these two vectors is 0. So they're orthogonal to each other. And moreover, if I calculate the length of u1, you get 1. And if you calculate the length of u2, we also get 1. So u1 and u2... This is an orthonormal basis for this subspace W, which is sitting in R3. So let's consider what happens when I construct a matrix that I'll call U, whose columns are each consisting of one of these vectors from this orthonormal basis. So the first column is going to be U1, the second column is going to be U2, the inner product of these two column vectors is 0, and the length of each of these column vectors is 1. So let's see what happens when I take the product of this matrix U with its transpose, and then let's take a look at what happens when I change the order of that product, so I multiply on the left by U transpose times U on the right. And these calculations are done in the Colab notebook, which is linked in the description of this video. So that's about the least interesting part is doing the calculations. And I would encourage you to do the calculations by hand and then check them in Colab to make sure you haven't made any errors. Um, so this matrix U again is gonna have its first column is gonna be the vector U1, which is one third minus two thirds, two thirds. And the second column is u2, and that is the column vector 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 1 third. So I'm going to take this matrix u and multiply it by its transpose. So the transpose, if u had three rows and two columns, then the transpose is going to have the reverse, two rows and three columns. Uh, so the first column of matrix u becomes the first row of u transpose. So row one of u transpose is one third minus two thirds, two thirds, and row two is two thirds, two thirds, one third. And when I take the product of these two matrices, out comes a three by three matrix, right? Because this matrix u was three by two, this matrix was two by three, so that product should give me a three by three matrix. And you can check the calculations that the result of first column is 5 ninths, 2 ninths, 4 ninths. The second column is 2 ninths, 8 ninths, minus 2 ninths. And the third column is 4 ninths, minus 2 ninths, and 5 ninths. And so now let's check what happens when we multiply these two matrices, U and U transpose, in the reverse order. So I'm going to take U transpose on the left times U on the right. And this product is defined because now I have a 2 by 3 matrix times a 3 by 2 matrix. So we're going to get something different because in the end here we're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. And if you look at what happens when I take the product in this order, U transpose times U, well the first entry in the first row is going to be the inner product of this vector with this vector. And so this is U1 inner product with itself. And because U1 was a normal vector, a unit vector, we get one here. This entry in the um, second column in the first row, we get by taking the vector U1 inner product with the vector U2. And because this was a orthogonal basis, those are that's gonna be zero. And uh, this entry, second row, first column is exactly the same. Um, here, we're taking U2 inner product with U1. And because those were orthogonal vectors, we get zero. And in the last entry in the second row, 
we would be taking U2 inner product with U2. And because this was a normal vector, its length is one. So when I, when I take the product in this order, U transpose on the left times U, we get the two by two identity matrix. And this second property, um, the fact that when I take U transpose times U, we get the identity matrix. This is true for all vectors U that we construct from whose columns come from an orthonormal basis for some subspace. So we need both the orthogon orthogonality and the fact that these columns all have magnitude one, which are gonna ensure that we get the identity matrix back. When we take the product in the other order, we get a three by three matrix, but this is not the identity matrix. So just be aware that we get the identity matrix when we take one of these products and we don't get necessarily the identity matrix when we take the product in the other order.